A couple weeks ago, I was thinking about what kind of inventory system I wanted to create for my game. Hey, what kind of inventory system should I make? Uh, do like a tile castle one. Isn't that one of the most complex inventory systems maybe ever? You won't. Okay. If you're new to the channel, I'm working on a free mod that combines my favorite aspects from Daisy, Stalker, and Tarkov. With my thorough forethought and planning completed, I set about creating my glorious inventory system. But before I show off the result, I wanted to talk about the process of actually making the damn thing. As little did I know, it would take me down a three week long rabbit hole of learning data management, networking, and UI design. And oh boy, was I bad at all three. But I remembered my motivational lake man. If my boy can be out there harvesting clams in minus 10 degree weather, then I can puzzle this thing out. So I put my head down and started getting to work. I really struggled with this problem and I'd been putting off working on it because I knew it was going to be hard as I'd already tried once before. For my first iteration, I had quickly thrown together what I could think of off the top of my head. No planning, no idea how to make UI, terrible performance and no maintainability. Just a disaster. So I scrapped it. This time around, I was determined to get it right, so I started by laying out a rock solid framework for the whole system. The first thing I did was work on the backbone, the actual framework for holding items, serializing them, and sending them between server and client. We're gonna get back to the whole server client thing in a bit. Here's the rundown of what I came up with. I wanted an inventory system that, instead of being a big bag of stuff on your back, it's more like lots of little inventories that are tied to what you have equipped. So your armor, your backpack, your vest, your pants, they'll all be separate inventories. So a vest might have two 2x2 two two slots and a couple 1x1 one one slots. My inspiration for this system is of course Tarkov, but uh, also this holy grail of an old DayZ fan concept I found. I even emailed the guy who made it to ask if he minded if I used some of his ideas, and he sent me the entire asset library he used and said good luck, which was pretty nice. Now that I had a solid idea of what I wanted to achieve, it was time to set about actually writing it out in code. So, you have the inventory class, which isn't much more than a data container. It has a couple useful methods, but they're not really important. So for example, a storage item such as a backpack would have one inventory class assigned to it. Then that inventory has a list of container classes. These container classes represent the individual slots an inventory can have. Then each container holds a list of item classes, which can be moved around and rotated within the inventory. The real sneaky part of this whole system was how items were managed. You see, most of the data about an item doesn't actually change during gameplay. For instance, its size and the icon it uses, the name, the description, etc. So how can we use that to our advantage? Well, the way to do that is by using something called a game resource. If you've used Unity before, this is pretty much the sandbox equivalent of a serializable object. If that meant nothing to you, think of it like this. We store all the data about an item that won't change, also called immutable data, in a file. This file is automatically networked from server to client. So the only data the item class actually needs to have in it is something that points to the appropriate item game resource and its position in the inventory. Now, that probably put a bunch of you to sleep, so here's the TLDR. Inventory hold containers. Containers hold items. Items hold little data, but very smart data. I was initially very wary of Sandbox's UI system as it uses a sort of hybrid of C-sharp and web development. HTML and CSS for my UI system. I don't know what on earth would inspire you to use this, but... Oh. Well, if Mr. Gary Mod himself says I'm learning web development, then I'm learning web development. And I hate web development. Before anyone says anything, I know it's not real web development, okay? There's no funny JavaScript or Node.js, it's just CSS and HTML. Now, after having learned how to use Sandbox's UI system, I can safely say that I still hate web development. But Sandbox has somehow done the impossible and made a UI system that is good. Essentially, what you do to actually get this to work is you create an scss file, which for my non-web developer friends, that is a cascading style sheet. This is responsible for the styling of the UI, so how it visually looks. And you can optionally use a HTML file as a template for creating your custom panels. Once you've got this ready, you can just slap a little use template attribute on top of your UI panel, and then the HTML can do all the bindings for the C Sharp components for you. It's basically magic. Once I'd figured that out with only some... Literally, what the f- Minor... Complications. It was time to move on to the actually difficult bit. Syncing this bad boy 
with the server. By the way, if you want to support the project, leave a like, maybe subscribe. If you're feeling generous, I've got a Patreon, patreon.com slash fortune dev. I currently have um, three patrons, which is more than I expected, to be honest. Although I think one of them is my mum, which, uh, love you, mum. You'll get some nice perks on the Discord uh, and access to the Crack Shack, which, uh... So that's going... okay. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty active on it if you want to talk to me. There's not many people there at the moment. But yeah, if you want to ask me questions or make suggestions, that's the place. My project's free and always will be. I want to work on it full time and uh, the way I'm going to do that is getting funded by you guys. So, yeah. Now, back to the video. Ah, networking. The magic of multiplayer. Move forward to any cell. In a multiplayer game, nearly everything the player sees is a big fat lie. Uh, kind of. The actual state of the game, and an awful lot of things about it, are stored on the server and only replicated to the client. What you see is what your client is told to see. The same is true of the inventory system. The server updates each client about what's happening to an inventory if that client happens to be listening to the inventory at the time, such as if you've opened a chest or are wearing a backpack. Anytime you take an action, such as moving an item or dropping an item, that action is then validated client-side before being sent off to the server. If they both work out, great, big thumbs up from the server. However, if the client says it can do something but the server says you can't, then we've got a problem. Either the client is lying, big no-no, or we goofed and their inventory is somehow scuffed. So the server can then say very politely to the client, hey, please fix this, X. Or, in the unlikely scenario that they're cheating, the server remotely detonates the IED hidden inside your PC. What the? Now, Sandbox has a very well-made networking system. It's not 100% complete, but it's got almost everything you'd need. But, because of the way I structured the inventory, I had to manually serialize and send the data for each inventory. Not a big deal. We convert it to a binary stream, send that into orbit, and then the client just yoinks the binary data, has a squiz and says, ah yeah, looks like an inventory alright, and updates the appropriate inventory. With all the hard work now complete, I have added most of the features I'll be needing. You can equip and unequip items, there's item stacking, context menus, unique item data, really everything you'll need for now. I've also added this cool little head flashlight, which uh, you'll see more of in the next video. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. The UI is still kind of ugly, but I'll touch up on that when I need to. Thanks to my patrons for supporting the project, we've got uh, my mum, Mr. Snrub, and Billy. If you'd like to see your name at the end of the video, maybe whack on down to my patron and maybe do a little dono. If you want to see how I went about making the AIs in this video, take a look at this one. Thanks, and see you later.